Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Big John. Big John's Bully House. Out here with Little Miss Bossy Time Savage Pups. I do apologize in the last video I did of them. I thought I left my contact information. I do apologize about that. Um, I didn't realize I didn't leave my phone number in there. Normally I do. But for everybody that was uh, asking about the puppies, yes, they are available. The way that I do payment is bank transfer, bank wire transfer from bank to bank. Puppies are 3,000, come ABKC registered, up to date on shots, dewormings, health certificate. They have had their second round of dewormer, first round of shots. They have another round of, uh, second round of shots coming up here shortly at eight weeks of age. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, why my prices are the way they are. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys why I priced them at $3,000. The reason this being is because this is the first three times hooch breeding I've ever done in-house. Um, a lot of you that have followed me for quite some time know that I'm actually trying to buy the property next door to mine. So that way I can expand my yard for my dogs, a bigger facility, bigger setup more room for everything and everybody the house next door is actually condemned so uh, I'm buying it I'm tired of looking at it and it's gonna be torn down and we're gonna have a bigger setup coming soon um, again you know normally like I've told a lot of people when there's only two puppies in the litter everything stays I, I don't sell anything um, normally so off this breeding here, I'm not even keeping anything. Everybody that's asked about, well, how much are your first picks and this and that, well, here's your opportunity right now, and here's your chance to buy first pick male and first pick female. Now, normally I don't um, sell my first picks ever, and that's just being honest. I have done it in the past, but it's something that I normally don't do. You know, I've had people ask me, you know, aren't you scared with them not being eight weeks of age, you know, in the grass? I take a lot of precautions in my yard. Um, the biggest fear for any breeder, I don't care what type of breeder you are, what type of dogs you breed. Your biggest fear is parvo, period. That is a yard killer um, you know and I take certain precautions now this is how I do my yard every uh, coming into spring I will bleach my entire yard I know a lot of people are like man you know you're, you're killing the grass or whatever else I bleach my entire yard period um, once it starts to get warm and all the snows melted all the ice is gone I bleach my entire yard I bleach and disinfect my kennels and uh, my dogs are on concrete you know they do have their their boxes with their bedding and everything so they don't have to lay on the concrete but I bleach the kennels you know every single day I take certain precautions um, for my yard as well the biggest factor is I don't let nobody come to my yard period I don't care if it's one of my partners and they can tell you personally I will not let nobody come to my yard until my puppies have had the, at least their first round of shots. Um, and if I know people are coming, I will literally take two gallons of bleach down my driveway, bleach my entire driveway, spray it with water, so when people are walking up to see the puppies um, at eight weeks old or nine weeks old, you're literally stepping on bleach water as you're walking up. Um, and this is just what I do, you know, I've, like I said, you know, I've, with my father before, uh, before he stopped, you know, because of his health and his age, he used to show in competition hunt walker coon hounds, <clears throat> excuse me. 
and I would watch a lot of the things he'd done, you know, and uh, it worked for him. So that's a lot of the reasons I do what I do. If you see somebody doing something and it's working, then why not try it yourself? Now, I'm not saying everybody go out and get 10 gallons of bleach, start bleaching your yard. Oh, my God, you know, I'm not saying to do that. Um, but there are certain precautions that you do need to take, especially with having dogs and upcoming litters, breedings, and puppies. So this is what I do, um, again. And, you know, I have no problem telling anybody what I do. It's not, it's not a secret. And I'm, if I can help somebody else, then I'm all for helping everybody else. I don't want to see anybody lose puppies, uh, lose adults, lose anything. I don't want to see anybody go through the things that I've had to go through uh, in the past. So, you know, that's why I always tell everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to call me. I have no problem answering any of your questions. A lot of people said, you know, th these dogs are a disgrace to the pit bulls. That's your opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. Uh, these dogs are not pit bulls, period. Did they start off in the beginning with a mix of Staffordshire Terrier and Pitbull? Yeah. But like any other breed of dog, you have to bring in other char uh, characteristics of certain breeds. And obviously, for a lot of these dogs, especially the extreme, somewhere down the line there was Bulldog brought in. I don't care who you are. I'm not going to deny it. Um, I've never done it personally in my yard. But somewhere... In creating these dogs there was some sort of bulldog I've seen a lot of people say well you know you have exotics no I don't have exotics again that goes back to a lot of people being misinformed and not completely a hundred percent educated on the breed and that shows you still how new this breed is the exotics are a breed of their own period it's a completely different breed from the American bully has nothing um, to do with my dogs at all period you know um i don't have exotics i don't breed exotics i do have one bitch that has an exotic ped but she does not look exotic she is abkc registered she was uh passed you know they looked her over checked everything out they qualified her to be abkc registered because she is clean enough to be abkc registered what I have are extreme pockets. When I say extreme pockets, my dogs are not like a lot of the other pocket class dogs. Um, and again, pocket class can go all the way up to 17 inches at the withers, not above 17 inches at the withers. My dogs are, I think the tallest dog in my yard right now is, is Gotti, actually. I think he's, I think he's 16, 16 inches at the withers. And again, you know, I have a lot of people, well, you know, do you, you have any problems with, you know, the standards or the classics or the XLs? I have no problem with them standards of dogs. I love all dogs. I love all bullies. I love all pit bulls. Again, I come from the game dogs. I will always have a love for the game dogs, period. I love a good working dog. And that leads into why my dogs have to work. I don't want a dog that's lazy, that can't run, that can't jump, that can't play, that can't enjoy life, that can't do uh, what a normal dog does. That's why I always, I'm out here in the heat with these dogs. I'm out here in all weather with these dogs, period. It does not matter. I literally have video of me and Savage at, I think it was 8.30 in the morning. And... I think it was 20 some degrees and we're out there in the snow in the weather and we're both suffering through it I mean even these pups right now again today where I'm at it's supposed to be a hundred degrees with the heat index and obviously you can see you know I got them in a little confined area little blue boys Want to play tug of war with my shorts. Um, you know, at this point in time, there's no shade here. And I want my puppies to be able to endure the heat. I want them to know, you know, the different climates of the weather. Even at a young age, I want them to experience this. 
play it, baby. Good boy. So again, uh, if anybody has any questions whatsoever, my phone number is 815-632-9073. I want to give a huge uh, shout out to all the subscribers, man. I've seen that we've been climbing in subscribers like crazy. Uh, the likes, the shares, the comments, the followers. You know, I have still gotten some negativity, which, hey, man, that's fine. You know, um... You can't please everybody. You can't make everybody happy, and that's cool. You know, I understand that. For some reason, you, you, you don't like my dogs, or you don't like what I'm doing, or you don't like me, or whatever your reason is. Hey, man, you know, it is what it is. God bless you regardless. You know, I'm, I'm not going to let something like that upset me, get me in a bad mood, ruin my day. We all have our different likes and our different loves and our different passions, and this may not be yours. But for me, it is. It is a love, it is a passion, it is something that I enjoy doing. So again, yes, the female is available. Yes, the blue male is available. If you have any questions and you want to put a deposit on either one, please feel, uh, feel free to give me a call. As always, take care. God bless. Stay safe. I hope you guys had a real good 4th of July. Go ahead and get a little overshot view. You know, and uh, before I go, you know, I did have a couple people say, you know, the dogs were inbred or lion bred. With a lot of inbreeding and lion breeding, what you have to make sure you do is have an outcross yes they do have little miss bossy and savage does have the same father but they both have different mothers from different bloodlines completely different bloodlines so there is my outcross now with this here obviously when you breed the blue male or the dark brindle female you're going to have an outcross of your own there again is where the outcrosses come in now i'm not telling everybody you know um to breed the way that i breed to do the things that i do that's that's not what i'm doing i have my own vision i have my own style i have my own thoughts and beliefs on how i do things not everybody's going to do the same thing that i do and i don't expect anybody to I'm not telling anybody to do the things that I do. The advice that I give is because of the things that I've experienced and the things that I've went through. Um, you know, as far as, you know, what if the people that buy the puppies or buy the dogs don't feed raw, how are they gonna look? Again, I have videos. Um, the last video of the little history documentary thing I've done to show you guys Hooch and how he developed and how he matured in his productions and what they turned into. A lot of dogs in there are not fed raw. Again, it is not what you feed your dogs, it's how you breed your dogs. The way my dogs look is absolutely 100% nothing to do with what I feed them. And again, this is not a shot, uh, shot at any pit bull breeders. But I'm going to use a pit bull as an example and my dogs as an example. I don't care how much raw you feed your pit bull. You will never, ever, ever be able to transform your pit bull into an American bully just because of what you feed that dog. It's not going to happen. This is strictly and purely genetics. So again, uh, if you guys have any questions, I know... You know, uh, I'm going to say the phone number one more time just in case somebody doesn't catch it. It's 815-632-9073. Go ahead and get them some fresh water. They've done stepped through it, stomped through it, laid in it. Go ahead and get them some fresh water and uh, get back to taking care of the dogs and cleaning kennels and feedings and everything. Again... God bless y'all.
whether you like what I do or not, I, it's not going to stop me. I'm still going to keep going, and I'm still going to bless you. Y'all take care. I got a lot of love for you guys, a lot of respect for you guys. God bless y'all.